because there are times where as women, you know, we can find ourselves in overwhelm. Whether you're a caretaker, a sister, a mother, a wife, and you're juggling a lot of things, but that's what makes you really powerful. We just need to encourage women to keep, to keep getting up and going. Like, don't give up on yourself. The world needs you to, to be a strong leader, and so does your family. And so Welcome back, Slay family. We are here with a woman who is taking leadership to a new level from Roanoke, Virginia. Help me welcome Ms. Sherry Winesett. Sherry, thank you so much for being here. Thanks so much for having me. It is a pleasure. And I will say before we begin, this is really exciting. Sherry and I met each other professionally, geez, probably 15 years ago, something along those lines, and hit it yeah. off great. And then life happens and you know sometimes you lose track of people found her again and this incredible book so i'm very excited to have sherry here because we are going to have a conversation about her book which was just released as you can see it is called transparent leadership and it is for women who mean business so let's begin sherry the book was great i had a chance to read it and i loved it uh, but first before we dive in can you take a minute and tell everyone what inspired you to write the book and maybe a little bit about your background leading up to all of this as well. Yeah, thanks, Leanne. So um, it's interesting. I have had the idea for this book for about nine years and I actually wrote the outline. So the seven keys have been the same seven keys for nine years. <laughs> but then the question is, it's always, well, why didn't you write the book? Um, and it's because I hadn't experienced enough. And there was more for me to learn. And also, I didn't know exactly who I was going to write it for. And uh, so I had those two breakthroughs and hence came the book in about six months time after nine years of waiting. After nine years. Well, you have an amazing professional background. Um, you've kind of done everything. At one point, you were working in the world of being a lobbyist. And then it, after that, you were working as an executive coach. You've been a franchise owner. Um, you're also a fractional CEO. You've done consulting, public speaking. I mean, you are really entrenched in the business world in every way possible. So it makes sense that you would certainly have the seven keys to transparent leadership. But before we talked about the keys, you did mention in the book why you think this is so important. And could you take a minute and just talk about what the value is of being a transparent leader before we talk about some of the keys? Yeah, it's such a great question. So um, there's a few things. One, I really believe that, you know, how we have a responsibility to lead. Everybody does. And I do think that we're all born with leadership qualities. It's just whether we activate them. Mm. And, you know, how we, we can't give up, right, on leading because we're going to be distracted by a lot of things, but the future generations are depending on us. You know, I think about our kids. I think about, you know, Roman. I think about Charlie and Sam. And it's like how they are led right, is how they're going to lead others in the future. And um, culture changes so quickly and culture is changing today. So for that reason, I think it's really important that, you know, we I wrote this book. Um, but I also wrote this book, you know, Transparent Leadership. It's really just about you can just be yourself. You can be an authentic leader. Um, you know, people, transparent leadership is about leading not just with wisdom, but with heart right? Being someone people can relate to, which we talked about a lot in our last conversation, right? Um, having empathy. And women just have all these unique abilities because we wear so many hats that, you know, I think at times those hats can prevent us or from moving forward or thinking that, you know, we should be on this leadership track. But the fact is, we lead in all areas of our life. So um, I think it's just really important to embrace that and realize that, you know, you're juggling a lot, but that's what makes you unique. Those are your superpowers to lead, right? And really change the world. Yeah, it's amazing. And and there's, I mean, we could spend hours sitting here going through every single key, but then they got to get the book to read the book. And that's a much better way of doing it. But <laughs> in there, there were a, a few things that really stood out to me. Um, 
you know, you talk a lot about vision and I think that that would be a great thing. So maybe you could touch on vision and how that ties in, please. Yeah. So um, a lot of times, you know, it's the difference between being a manager and a leader, right? A leader really has a great vision. But then I worked with a lot of clients who said, I just can't get people to buy into my vision. Well, vision starts with buying into you, right? Mm -hmm. So you can say, we're going to go here and we're going to do all these exciting things. But if they haven't bought into you as their leader, which involves like trust, right? And communication and respect, they're never going to buy into your vision. And so it's so important to create that self-awareness of who you are as a leader and to be accountable as a leader and, and really vulnerable, right? So that you're someone people want to follow. Yes. And uh, one of the other things I loved is that you talk a lot about integrity and Crazy enough, you and I have both had experiences in the past uh, working in law firms <laughs> where there was a lack of integrity. As a matter of fact, that's ultimately what drove me to become an entrepreneur after having an experience at multiple firms with lack of integrity. But you do talk about that. And how do you, Sherry, define integrity? How do you say this is what integrity is? I know you talk about it in the book, but I think it would be yeah. great to have your own words. Oh, yeah, I, I, I'd love to hear how you define it, too. Um, so integrity is just, I mean, it's really doing the right thing. It is, you know, uh, practicing what you preach, like actually, you know, not just telling others what to do, just, you know, don't just, what is that saying, Leanne? Um, it's not just do what I say, it's do as I do, right? So yeah. integrity is walking the walk. Um, it's being honest. It's uh, admitting mistakes. It's uh, following through with your promises, right? I mean, it's it's delivering on your promises. And how many people feel like, you know, they've experienced these broken promises because someone else has put themselves first before their team. So leading with integrity is just, you know, doing the right thing. Doing the right thing. And you even have a quote, doing the right thing when you know no one else is looking. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Love so, it. Yes, absolutely. Now, you did start to talk a little bit about why you chose to focus this book on women, because honestly, the seven keys apply to anybody who wants to be a great leader. But what made you feel like you wanted to direct it towards women? Were you looking to direct it that way because that's who you want to impact or you felt like they're not getting the message um, in, in a concise format without this book? What made you target that demographic? You know, it was part of me wanting to be their cheerleader um, because it's not, I, I just feel like they need that encouragement and, and, you know, just to say, hey, you're doing the right thing. And sometimes even when you don't feel like a, like there's imposter syndrome or whatever it is creeping in, just, it's just a season, right? And you are powerful, step into your powerful. The world does need you. And it's funny because I have a friend who I was talking to, some of um, your listeners may know him. It's uh, Ray Higdon. And um, him and I have had the chance to do some work together. But I remember he said something one time and it just hit me. I was like, oh my gosh, that's it. Ray says, help the person you used to be, right? If you're out to create impact, help the person you used to be. And I, like you, was working in law firms and I was a franchise executive and I was, you know, just feeling like I was having all this success, but I had so many hats I was wearing. Like I had little kids and it was hard. And I felt like, am I doing the right thing there? Or should I give up on my career? Should I just be a stay-at-home mom? Should I go into this line of business, right? That's just a season. You know, you, you can do great things. You don't have to give up on yourself because we can do it all. You know, people say you can't have it all. And, and I disagree with that. You know, I think there, there is a balance. But again, you go through these seasons whether you're a caretaker, a sister, a mother, or wife, and you're juggling a lot of things, but that's what makes you really powerful. And um, we just need to encourage women to, to keep getting up and going. Like, don't give up on yourself. Like, 
the world needs you to to be a strong leader and so does your family and so does everyone you know around you and i i love that you do address that because there are times where as women you know we can find ourselves in overwhelm you know maybe when your kids are little or maybe it's when your kids are in sports and they're in a traveling league or you know maybe it is when you find yourself taking care of a parent and it's easy to try and do everything perfectly realize that you can't and then start taking yourself off the list and putting everyone else's needs first. So yeah, you have a young daughter. What are your hopes that your daughter will learn from this and who she'll become out of the lessons that you're <laughs> really passing on to her? Well, you know, I hope what she'll learn is that I wasn't just a bossy mom. I was a leader. <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, you know, sometimes leadership can be confused for bossiness in women. Um, I hope that, you know, she's strong and she's independent. And um, I just hope that she continues to be strong and confident, you know, as a leader, because she's 15. She's going to go through a lot in life. She's going to ride that roller coaster, right, Leanne? We talk about the entrepreneur roller coaster. Um, <laughs> But, you know, she, I just want her to continue to be strong and confident in herself as a leader. And, you know, I have a son too, and this is just as much for him that I want him to see a strong person in his mother, you know, which I hope he already does, um, but always support, practice patience, you know, and honor the women in his life who are out there going after it, leading their families and their teams while nurturing their empires, you know? Yes. And this, you know, this book, I mean, it can apply, obviously, if, if you are in management or if you're an entrepreneur or to your family, or if you're heavily involved in, you know, your church or something in the community, because at the end of the yeah. day, if you want to be a person of influence, you're going to lead people no matter what it is that you're up to. So For sure. Now you have written this. It's great. I highly recommend it. It's available on Amazon, correct? That's where I got it. It is. <laughs> and Thank you. meanwhile, you're also doing a lot of public speaking. You've got social media. You are spinning a lot of plates right now. What do you see for yourself next? If you were going to say in the next five years or 10 years, look out because Sherry is going to... <laughs> It'd be creating a lot of impact around the world and um, helping a lot of women and uh, maybe, you know, co contributing to the overall conversation about women and in leadership. And um, I think, you know, really, I'll, I'll be speaking on stages. Um, I think I got another book in me. <laughs> so you never know, though. You know, we can say, here's what I'd love to be doing in five years. And then all of a sudden you wake up tomorrow and, oh, there's another opportunity, right? There's opportunity yeah. everywhere. So all the time. And I yeah. know there is some top secret transition you're about to make professionally. So we'll stay tuned for that. I think that's coming down. Stay, the pipeline, tuned. Right? stay, stay tuned. tuned. Yeah. Um, get ready to make some pretty cool moves that I think are, again, going to really help me have that global impact. So, and, you know, I just appreciate you so much, Leanne, just reconnecting with you. I mean, you know, oh, you're, you're, you're not bringing this up. You're like, you guys, she's saying this is all about you, Sherry. And she's just such a generous person. But when I met Leanne 15 years ago, I was in need of a mentor. And I've been really fortunate to have a lot of female mentors in my life. Um, there were probably, gosh, right now I could have, I say a lot, but I think it is a lot for women. I had three female mentors. How mm -hmm. awesome is that? Leanne was one of them. And I've been, uh, I've been living a long time. So that says a lot. Um, but you've always made a great impact on my life because I always felt that you were an authentic leader, that you really cared about people and man, you were always going after it and you still are. And I love that. <laughs> well, thank you, Cherry. I, Cherry, I really, I love the book because you know, we all strive to be our best and we all fall down. And we all make mistakes, but it's yeah. to me, it resonates with who I would like to be as a leader. You know what I mean? And that's who I was seeking when I was looking for mentors. And honestly, I had one 
good female mentor in my life. And that's really it. And it's mostly been men. So the book just jumped off the shelf to me, so to speak. And I think the more that we can empower women like that, look, there's nothing wrong with being a woman and having a male mentor, but there are times where you wish somebody would understand you, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Or just like you could say, oh, this doesn't look so hard or, you know, when you're having a bad day or I think too, Leanne, I'm just so glad you brought that up because uh, it's so important that we continue to mentor. And I don't see a lot of it today, but I hope it's coming back. You know, think about the the people who mentored you, even if it was that one person and they could have changed, you know, the whole trajectory of your life or your career, whatever it was. And then who can you give back to? I think mentoring is just so important And I do really think this generation is yearning for it. Like they are thirsty Mm -hmm. to be mentored, even though that's not necessarily the narrative. That's not what I've seen. They're willing to learn. I agree with you so much. And it's funny because, you know, years ago when I was building my business and my son was a newborn, like he was really little and I was exhausted. I was trying to juggle being an entrepreneur and, you know, getting up every couple hours. And I looked around all the people mentoring me were men, but I knew one woman and I called her up and I just needed someone who I could talk to who had been in my shoes. So, you know, I love that you are doing this because it's not just about the seven keys. It's about creating another force for women to be uplifted with through the book or just this conversation. You know, all of us have been through experiences. Who can we reach out to and who can we make a difference for? So um, as we wrap up, I know that you have a lot of plates spinning. I think on rare occasions you do coach people, but it's very rare and you're, but you are doing public speaking as well, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. I do coach a a, a, a couple of clients. Um, I love working with women um, who are maybe looking even for uh, transition. I think my next book is going to be on transition. You mentioned that at the beginning. <laughs> Sherry's done a lot of things and it's been super exciting. And I want to talk to people about transition because you may need to transition your life to adapt to what's going on in your life, right? So maybe we can write that one together, Leanne. I think we should. And I mean, if you look at what's happened, I think that some of the biggest transitions actually came out of the pandemic. I mean, the whole way people work and operate, that is something they'll never go back. I mean, the whole working remotely and Zoom and all of this was not possible years ago. So as horrible as the pandemic was in a lot of ways, it opened a tremendous amount of new doors in the business world and the leadership world as well. It totally did. And you know, what's really interesting, it's timely that we're talking about this because I saw this statistic today that actually said most companies now are requiring people to come back into the office. And that's really hard for, for those who have been working, you know, at home during COVID, but they're actually demanding it. So I really think people are at a crossroads and they need to know their options. They need to, they need to know, they need to at least know what they can explore. Like, okay, I can stay on this path or maybe I can, you know, go this hybrid option. Maybe I'm going to become an entrepreneur. Maybe I'm going to, you know, take control of my destiny and do my own thing. Um, I think that would be good for another episode. (laughs) Yes, Stay tuned for that one. Now, if people want to follow you, can you give out your website, social media, everything so they can find you? Yeah, sure. So um, it's basically front slash Sherry Winesett everywhere. So on Instagram, it's Sherry Winesett. That's how my name is spelled here. S-H-E-R-I-W-I-N-E-S-E-T-T. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on Facebook. And, you know, it's interesting when I have to give out this information, you know, when I'm being interviewed by by lovely people like you, I'm like, should I change my name? (laughs) No, (laughs) people can't spell that it's or or my handle (laughs) I think it's easy leave it it's fabulous it's great and then the book again is available on Amazon it is called transparent leadership for women who mean business it's a great simple read where it breaks things down it's not you know too wordy it's perfect it's like the perfect guide 
to taking yourself to a new level as a leader. And also if someone is in a position where they are transitioning, Sherry, I just want to mention this. I think it could be a great way to evaluate who you're going to work for. So if someone's like, okay, maybe I want to take this job or maybe I want to take this job or I want to go into this culture or this environment, look at the person that you'll be working with and are they a transparent leadership? Sometimes people get excited about, you know, a title or money, but they're not really thinking about who they're going to be locking arms with and who you spend time with day after day after day can really impact your quality of life. Absolutely. Yep. What is it? Um, the books you read, the five, you know, the books you read and like the five people that you the hang five people with. you hang around with. There's your life right there. Well, Sherry <laughs> Longset, my dear, thank you so much for being here. It has been a pleasure to have you really enjoyed the book. I uh, can't wait for your big announcement of what's coming next. I know you're on, a, you got a little NDA, so we'll just sit tight and wait for that. But congratulations. I'm sure it's going to be another big step in your awesome career. So thanks for being here. Oh, thank you so much for having me on your show, Leanne. Thank you.